And we think that the discerning traveler who comes here will appreciate what we have to offer. So in the context of, of new developments, uh, yes, we are pursuing some developments, but our market is a very niche market. It's a high-end market. It's an upscale market. We are not prepared to deviate from that. And so what we're trying to do is really to ensure that we are the best at what we do so that people who come here have an experience like no other. And I think the team has been doing an excellent job. I want to commend them. And uh, that really is what Nevis is about. Excellence, excellence in food, excellence in service, and so that people who come here keep coming back because they've had such a memorable experience. Now, talk to me a little bit about, because you're right, you want the development, but you also want, you don't want to run the risk of overdevelopment either. You don't want to run the risk of, of undermining the product that you're, you're selling. Talk to me about carrying capacity and how you maintain that balance. And, and is that something that is you're, you actually are, are scientifically studying or is it you just sort of uh, well, seeing how it goes? Well, we talk a lot about carrying capacity, and that normally happens when clearly you have a lot of new bills that are, that are, that are happening. Nevis still has, what, just over 400 hotel rooms plus our villa stock. So give or take, we have the capacity maybe for 1,000 rooms, so to speak, on the island. Um, our challenge is how do we keep those 1,000 rooms filled all year round? Because to my mind, it makes it sense to have another 1,000 or another two or 3,000, and then at this time of year, they're all empty. So how do we fill the rooms that we have and keep them filled all year round? That, for us, is a challenge. And that is why we think events such as these that has brought all these journalists from all around the world uh, and uh, so much media attention uh, are important in terms of building that reputation, building uh, out the, the repertoire, if you will, for Nevis, the story of Nevis, the narrative of Nevis, which we think is a very important narrative. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, we, we, uh, I think this is actually the perfect time now to focus on, on just how unique Nevis and the Nevis Mango is. Thank you very much, Honorable Premier, for taking a few minutes. I, I know you're going to, to, to be around for the remainder of this exciting event. I'm seeing all kinds of food. It's not particularly good for me. I'm trying to lose weight. but uh, uh -oh. well, I, you got to talk to I, Seamus about that one. Seamus he's, is... He's, he's going to guide you in the right direction. Weight, weight loss mangoes? Is that what Seamus is doing? It's possible. He claims it's possible. Okay. Well, all right. Is possible. Thank okay. you very much. And I just want to say thanks to all the journalists who are here who have traveled from very far. We welcome you. We hope you tell good stories about a beautiful island, the island of Nevis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Premier. All right, time for me to talk to some chefs and uh, find out what they've, well, I was going to say have up their sleeves, but their sleeves are rolled up. So, um, okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to swap? We're swapping mic. Oh, that's uh, quite a mic there. I've got a loud voice. All right, well, we are, okay, so there we go. Judy Jew is with us today for the third time. Well, let me tell you a bit about, about Judy, though. She is a Korean-American chef. You're based in London. Yeah. And she's got restaurants in London and, and Hong Kong. And she, she's had, she has shows on the Cooking Channel. She has a book, actually, that, that is the same name as your show, yeah. Korean, Korean Food Made Simple. Wow. Yep. And guess what? They, I understand there are a few copies on the island that will be available for sale on Sunday. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, okay. So should I be doing this then? So should I have both mics, folks, or you want me to do this? Should I be doing this? Okay. No? Yes? You want me to? One, two, three. Hello? Hello. Okay. Are you picking her up? Okay. But, uh, but are, the, are the journalists hearing her, though? I'm not sure because it's, it's, it's not being amplified. Okay. Well, can we do both? Okay. All right. <laughs> Double amplification. Judy has been here three times. We just can't keep her away. Yeah. Tell me about your coming back again, again, and again. I love this island. It's uh, so fun. There's lots of uh, rich culture, which um, really is something that, that keeps me back that I think makes Nevis so different from the other Caribbean islands is that there is a lot of local culture. You know, if, if you do want to, to, to eat local, you can, but then at the same time, you can go to the Four Seasons and get your egg white omelet or your, you know, almond latte or something li like that. So it's a, it's a good balance of, of both worlds where you have your luxury, you have the things that you want from back home, wherever that may be, but at the same time, you can also 
to delve in and explore the island. It's so rich in history, the culture, the people, etc. I love the fact that there are no um, franchises on this island and that they don't allow the large cruise boats to, to dock up here. So it's, it's really nice and small and quaint. And uh, when I go on vacation, I kind of want to get away from it all. So I find this the, the perfect hideaway. So it's like I'm sick of St. Parts. I'm sick of all that scene of the Hamptons and all that. And so this is kind of a, a more relaxing, um, you know, a real vacation. But you do learn about the culture as well. And it's also really rich in history. You know, Alexander Hamilton was born here. And with Hamilton being all the rage around the world, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to see his, his birthplace and put it into context in history. Absolutely. And, and I, I gather that that has actually been a little bit of a boost to the tourism industry as well, um, all the attention on Alexander Hamilton. But today, all the attention is on our chefs. And what Judy is going to do today, apparently, like I said, I just, I just eat. I don't ask a lot of questions about hoe. So today I get to ask about the hoe. Apparently, a number of fruits, including mangoes, can be used as a meat tenderizer. Yes. Not just a flavorizer. But a tenderizer. Tell us a little bit about that and then tell us how we can use these delicious mangoes to do just that. So mangoes are um, a part of a fruit group that has something called protease in them. And so it's like kiwis, um, pineapples, um, mangoes, Asian pears, even figs. have this type of enzyme that breaks down the uh, do you want me to hold it that that, that, that 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 breaks down the protein and so mangoes are no different of course they're going to also impart some flavor into the food too so I've created um, I am going to ask you to hold this now <laughs> I, I've created just a, a little recipe just to demonstrate that um, and you only need about one to two tablespoons per cup of marinade so we've got some mangoes here and ripe mangoes are the best, but you can also use, you know, mango juice or anything. And this is a quick recipe, just kind of fusing, fusing some Asian ingredients with some local ingredients. So some soy sauce, sesame oil, and uh, fish sauce. Some nice complexity and depth of flavor there. Some salt and some Navishan hot sauce. Um, Llewellyn's mango hot sauce is the best, by the way, if you haven't had it. Last, last night I had about a cup of it with my dinner. It's so good. The mango one is really mango. good. And then some um, honey. And this is going to help um, balance out all that acidity with some sweetness. And, of course, garlic. I'm going to put that all in. And some salt and pepper. A little bit of salt, freshly ground pepper. And then we're going to blitz that all up, pretend that this works. Make some sound effects for me. Exactly. And, um, and then I like to use... Um, chicken thighs, but obviously this is really good for any kind of cuts of meat that are usually dry. So, like chicken that's been in your freezer a bit too long, you can pull it out, and then you can tenderize it using some kind of fruit. Um, this is what it looks like afterwards. So you blitz it all up, you get some great marinade, and that um, can sit there for about, I mean, even as, as little as 20 minutes, and you're going to get some really nice tender meat. It kind of massage it through, make sure it covers up everything. And then throw it on the grill for, you know, uh, three to four minutes, whatever you're cooking. And you'll get some gorgeous chicken that's tenderized, some nice caramelization from all those other ingredients and the flavors, and you're done. And I put some local scotch bonnet peppers on top. And that's another way to use your mangoes, especially mangoes that are going overripe. Mash them up, put them in a bag, make some marinade. You can freeze that marinade to to use for, for later, and you don't have to waste any food. I love it. And especially, you know, as as we say, they reach a point in time in the season where mangoes are falling on the ground. So when we get to that... You can use up all your mangoes and make a really good tenderizing marinade with a good flavor, too. Thank you very much, Judy. I see another book uh, (laughs) percolating in that brain of hers. All right, thank you very much. We're going to step over to the hot sauce guy. (laughs) This is Chef Llewellyn Clark, and he is... uh, He's actually born in Manchester uh, to... in, in the UK, <laughs> to, um, to Navision parents. And he's moved, he moved back here nearly 20 years ago. And um, he, he did train in the UK, and he's worked as a chef in Canada. And he's now back home. And his thing is, as we heard, agro-processing and jellies and jams and those sorts of things. And today, he's going to tell us how we can take a mango like this and make it taste and feel like a sorbet. No, a sorbet takes quite a bit of work. Yeah, it, does, it takes quite a bit of work. Yes, that's correct. But um, you could have a picked up a tree. Because yeah. this particular uh, mango is a julie mango or a grafted mango. Um, it doesn't have a lot of fiber in like the, like the poly, like these ones here. 
or the um, just a famous one called the Amri Poly. It's very sweet. It's like the, the cream of the creme mm -mm. of mangoes in Nevis, but it has a lot of fiber in. The Julie mango or the grafted mango doesn't. So what you do with the mango then is you, you take it when it's ripe, ripe full, but not too overripe. Uh, put it in the freezer. And so what will happen, the sugars will expand in it. And then you take it out of the freezer, uh, let it defrost slightly, and then just take a little bite out of it and then suck out the, all, the, all the mango. You don't, you don't need to cut it with a knife and then make little squares like a little hedgehog, you know, the fancy ones that you like to do. Nothing like that. Just take a bite of it and then suck out the, um, suck out the pulp. And that's, it'll give you the consistency and the flavor of uh, mango sorbet. And the, these mangoes here I got this morning, um, collected this morning. You have to go out early in the morning to collect the mangoes because you have to, it's a race to get there first because after that you got the donkeys and then you got the monkeys and you got the goats and the sheep. So you get there first. Thank you very much. And seeing as you're, you're on your live streaming right now, do you want to put in a little plug for your hot sauce? Where can people get that? Yes, the hot sauces are available at Rams, Rams Supermarket and at IGA. And if you don't get it there, uh, you should be able to get it at Temptations in the Duty Free at um, Llewellyn Bradshaw Airport. Thank you very, very much, Llewellyn Clark. And the sorbet, which I'll certainly be trying that. Now, this guy is a must-have in the information. We know we're talking about mangoes falling on the ground, getting overripe. This is Michael Harrison, and he hails from Barbados. He has worked all over the world um, uh, London, in the Seychelles, in Maine, um, and of course here in the Caribbean, and has cooked for celebrities of, and a former president and a very popular member of the royal family, actually. Uh, good morning and welcome to Nevis. Thank you. Good morning. Now, Michael, you are going to tell us what we can do with all of these overripe mangoes. Yes, yeah, so my tip for today really is utilizing overripe mangoes or ripe mangoes or if you have plenty of mangoes and you don't just want to let them waste, it's a great, easy, simple process. Um, you just peel the mango, um, dice the mango, no special dice, just, just simple, just to cut it up. Um, and then you put the mango into the blender and you make the puree. Now, the puree can go in the fridge or, uh, sorry, or the freezer, it can stay for weeks or months. Uh, then you can make additional items with the puree. So for me, a great tip um, is to make some sorbet. Is it just a flavor thing, or is it something about the, 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 the champagne or the alcohol that, that enhances? Well, for me, just this saying that you have a mango and champagne sorbet or mango and champagne soup song that's exquisite. Um, and, it, and it doesn't even need to be a, a, a real expensive champagne. A sparkling wine will work fine. But it adds that lightness to the, to the sorbet. It also gives it that taste of acidity. It sounds sexy. I mean, you just say, oh, I'm making a mango sorbet with champagne. It just like, oh, wow. But I, but I just love to add a little bit of alcohol. And, and, and also as well. Sometimes with food, you just, you can get the same results with wine. But if you have champagne, I'll be like, wow. So, yeah, so, yeah. I can work with that. Thank you very much, Michael Harrison. Thank you. And we have Mr. Wallace. Sylvester Wallace is with us. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you made it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What part of Nevis are you from? And, and, what, and what's your, your, your background in cooking? 
Well, I'm from Rollins Pasture, the village of Saint, the parish of St. James's, and uh, my background in, in cooking is a very long background. I come from a very long way. I started uh, cooking at a very tender age of 18 years old. Before I started at 18, I used to, you know, with my mom, because my mom was a chef, and whatever you want to know, you know, in cooking, I try to produce it in classes, doing classes around the island. So that's one of the main things I enjoy doing, teaching people my skills, so that if I depart life, the skills wouldn't just die with me, but somebody will carry on. I also have a restaurant at the Cotton Ginnery Mall called Caribbean Flavors. So if you feel free, you could check it out. Check us out at the Cotton Ginnery Mall, the Caribbean Flavors, where you can have a wide variety of Caribbean flavor. Please. Thank you very much. No, speaking of flavors, that is actually what Sylvester is going to show us today. And that is how to extract the best flavor out of a mango. Well, just to extract the best flavor from a mango, there's only three components we need. We need a variety of mangoes, which you know there are different varieties. We have the, um, the brown ball, we have the ember pali, we have the seedy mangoes, we have the jewelry mangoes, we have the god-blooded mangoes. There are several different types of mangoes. And one of the best ways I realized to um, bring the good flavors into mangoes is just simply blend your mangoes, add a tip of salt, and a tip of lemon juice. Wait, hold on, hold on. Now, are we blending different varieties? Yes, you're compiling, compiling, compiling the flavors together. Oh. So we blend different varieties of mangoes together. And to get a unique flavor, just add a tip of salt and a tip of lime juice to it. And you'll have a nice, rich flavor. Now, what are we then going to do with this puree that we've come up with? Well, 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 give me some ideas of what, what you would use well, that for. Well, for my, for my purpose, we're using a mango puree. I use mango puree in different types of sauce. I use it in dressings. I use it in my cooking. I use it in deserts. I use it in sobes, ice creams. I use it in tatas and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things I can do with mangoes. All right. Thank you very much. A tip of salt, tip of lemon. Thank you very much, Chef Sylvester. All right. And we're moving down now to Chef Michael Henville. Now, Michael trained at the Culinary Institute of America, and he is currently, and I, by the way, I just think it's such an amazing program. He actually works with the Ministry of Health, and he's the chef with the School Meals Program. And I just love that they have a professional chef working with their School Meals Program. And I'm always seeing pictures in social media of you with the kids. So <laughs> you're not cooking for them, you're cooking with them. Yes, both. Cooking with them and cooking for them. So what is it that you're doing with them? Teaching them? Basics? Lots of things, yeah. We, we speak to the classes. Um, I work really close with the Ministry of Health, the Health Promotion Unit. We go directly into the classrooms for all the different schools uh, and teach them, you know, spread the food education uh, and, and nutrition is very, very important. Well, I think that, again, kudos to the, to the Ministry of Health for that program. So here's something that I think a lot of us who live in the Caribbean might take for granted. It's peeling and slicing a mango. There are people who don't know how to do this. I've seen <laughs> videos on YouTube of people just just butchering yeah. mangoes or wasting all oh, the wastage. I tell yeah. you, that's mango abuse. That's, it's, it is. It should be a crime. <laughs> so you're going to tell us how to so, yeah, you know, avoid doing those sorts yeah, of things. Just, yeah, just looking at them there, you have so many different shapes, Oops, so many different sizes. Um, they're oblong, they're just weird shaped, and uh, I mean, just look you know, there's, there's plums and, and pears bigger than these things. So some people find it um, kind of intimidating and look at it and say, well, what's in it? And I know it's a seed, but where is it? And, you know, so the easiest thing to do, just grab a regular vegetable peeler and you can just peel the mango just like that. Real simple. And then when that's done... Because the, the, the seed inside is, is quite large. Um, it's, it's not like, like an apple or uh, it, it doesn't, um, you can't just peel them down like a banana and, you know. Um, so what you can do now, so when you, when you get the, the, the um, mango peeled, like so. And by the way, this is a new one on me. The peel, I never even thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> Very easy, very we, simple. We do it with our teeth, folks. I'm, that, that's, I'm going to show you that one, too. <laughs> um, take your time, because it's very slippery, and you're going to have a knife in your hand. And so you're going to start and just go down, 
not really direct in the center because the, the seed, the pit is in there. So just a little off center. And then just give a nice, easy slice. If your knife uh, does hit the seed, just carefully just work it around it and continue slicing down. And you see the seed is right there. Okay? And then you can do the same thing on the other side. Again, if your knife hits the seed, just work around it. Take your time because it's very slippery. And so you have the two halves. And then you can also go down the sides and just get a little bit more sliver off the side. And same thing for the other side. Okay? Now this, really good snack as well. Um, you want me to demonstrate? I, I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I've been looking at mangoes for an hour. But. Now with the, um, with the sides that you've, you've sliced off, you can then easily... Just take your knife, you can slice it like that, uh, you can dice them, and then use them for whatever application you want. Freeze them, make your sorbet, make your ice cream, anything like that. Um, personally, what I do, I don't use a peeler, because I don't like to do dishes. I don't use a knife, I use a cutting board. I find myself a nice cool spot under a tree somewhere. Right? <laughs> and then I have a bowl with about 15 of them. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Do you take off your shirt or you lean forward? I lean forward, yeah. Because I don't like to do laundry as well. Mango so. stains. <laughs> yes, mango does stain. Um, and then I just find me a nice, cool, quiet place under. Just have Gosh, at it. You and know they want to, yeah. You guys want to see it, right? <laughs> okay, so starting easily. Um, I start at the, at the top. Make a small bite. Sorry, Mr. Mike, man. Um, make a small bite. Here, here no, you no, go. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And uh, just using your mouth and your teeth and your God given talents and <laughs> just peel them down. Like that. Oh, thank you very much, Michael. And Chef Simple. Michael, we're going to leave you to eat your mango. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> you. And we're, we're going over here to spend some time with Chef Seamus Mullen. Um, and. Chef has been uh, acknowledged and recognized and has many accolades uh, to his name and to his career. He has actually been a semi-finalist with the famous James Baird Foundation three years in a row, um, both as uh, best chef in New York. His restaurant as well, is it Tertulia? Tur 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 El Colmado and Whirly Bird, yeah, several restaurants. Oh, okay. Oh, and and but Tortulli in particular was nominated, made it to uh, to uh, uh, as a finalist as best restaurant as well. All right. And of, and he's written a couple of books, and I want to. I hope we get a chance to talk about that a bit um, today. Though he's going to tell us about using green mango as a garnish. So let's talk about the green mango in particular. Um, wh why green as opposed to a ripe mango? I just um I just teeth obviously. Uh, um, so. When mango season comes a little bit late, you use green mangoes. And one of the things I love about the mango is that in addition to being so many different varieties of mangoes, there are also different stages in the development of the fruit. Um, and they taste different throughout the development of the fruit. I happen to really love green mangoes for a variety of reasons. One, they're very tart, um, but they also have some very, very unique health benefits that a lot of people don't talk about. They are hands, stay in your shirt, or, uh, or in your fingers and your hair, but you have these great little beautiful kind of slices. learned to cut down just just to one side of the seed and you have a nice larger chunk and you can cut that into some bigger pieces and then I'll use this in a curry and I'll cook it into the curry just in the same way you might use a, a green plantain or you might use a potato or yucca or something like that. This will cook down and it'll get kind of tender and it'll give some acidity into the broth, into the soup that you're making. It's really good with mahi-mahi with and a little bit of coconut milk. You make a beautiful curry with green mango. 
Well, no, Seamus, we know that, that Seamus has used his years of experience as a chef to, to focus in particular on healthy cooking. And, and he's had a, it's been a life-changing experience for you, I gather. And you can read about it in his book. <laughs> um, but is there, or what is, what is the difference in the health benefit of a green versus a ripe mango? Well, there are going to be different um, nutrients in a green mango than, in, than in, a, in a ripe mango. Ripe mango, as the fruit develops, is obviously in its peak, um, its peak development, if you will. Uh, Mother Nature is really amazing. Mother Nature knows when, when she wants us to eat things. When the mango falls off the tree, that's when the monkey grabs it and then throws the pit and the next mango tree grows up. So it's this beautiful symbiotic relationship. But as I said before, the green mango does have those, those prebiotic fibers, which are really, really good for feeding healthy bacteria. The ripe mango is going to have a lot of nutrients, obviously a lot of vitamin C as well. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of health benefits to eating them both as, uh, as unripe and as ripe mangoes. Thank you very much, Seamus. Okay. All right, and we're going to move over to our mixologist. And uh, this, is, this is David Barker. He's also from Barbados. Yes. And before we even talk about what you're showing us today, I'm sure there's some people that are thinking, well, he's behind a bar and he's got all these bar things. What's a mixologist? All right. Um, I can answer this simply. This, what's a cook and what's a chef? It's a difference. A cook cooks, a chef creates. That's the same thing that happens within the bar. It happen, it, that happens in the kitchen. I actually personally have a culinary background. I actually was trained. I have an associate degree in culinary arts from the Hostile Institute. I um, actually worked for Walt Disney World, worked for Disney's Polynesian and Grand Floridian Resort and Spa before it even came, before it came back to Barbados. I worked in Radisson. I worked a little bit in South Africa already as in the chef capacity before put in all the chef products into mixing cocktails. So what drew you then, uh, I don't say away from food because you're still a flavor man, but what drew, drew you to the, to the, to the mixology? Well, um, I, I went into the bar. It was actually basically a mistake. So I, was, I came back. I was basically looking for something to do. And I couldn't, get a, I couldn't get a job in the capacity I wanted it in. So I said, well, I'll try something else. So I, they said, well, the only thing I have for you is to work in the bar. I went into the bar one, one day, and I've been winning competitions, traveling all over the place, and changing the world one drink at a time. <laughs> smooth, eh? <laughs> Speaking of smooth and, and green mangoes, actually, you are going to show us how to use a green mango to mix a drink. Now, is this, just for curiosity, alcoholic or not? Well, this can be, I actually have, I actually have two, two things for you. I got alcohol and I have a, a non-alcoholic form. Um, but the drink that I will be using, will be using it will be with the fresh green mango. As Shema says, it has a lot of probiotic, probiotic stuff for the body. Um, one of the things that I can tell you about this green mango, when mixing cocktails, I use the entire, the entire mango. Skin too? Skin and all. The only thing that I don't use is the pit of the actual mango. The skin actually gives you a nice color. If you're using white spirits, it actually gives you a beautiful color as a finished product. Um, the mango itself is, is good for if you have gastro problems, if you have acidic problems within the, within the stomach also. Um, it also, um, it, it also, if you have sunburn in Nevis, you can tell the, tell some of the guys, if you have sunburn, a mango with a little bit of brown sugar, you put it on your face, it actually works really well for the sunburn. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Do you, do you have? Do you get a little burned? Are you saying that I look? <laughs> <laughs> no, I no no. You look you look really healthy. You really do. All right. Um. So the cocktail that I'm making today is is pretty much simple, but it's putting some ingredients together. So what I did was use the the same green mango. So instead of instead of um slicing it or taking any of the green off, what I did is just basically took everything from off of the mango, chopped it up, and we're going to imagine this is working. <laughs> we pop all in with just water. That's what I do. Just pop all in with water. Um, if you, you, can use, you can use two or three to about 16 ounces, 16 ounces of water. We blend it up and strain it till we get all the peth and everything out of it. 
What I then add to that is an alkali product because I want to keep it all healthy within the body. So I add fresh lemon juice and I did a brown sugar infused simple syrup. So I put like, some star anise seeds, some cinnamon, some cloves, some nutmeg, and I combined all the ingredients together to give you this wonderful product here. But I'm mixing it with the monk gear because I'm from Barbados, proud Bajan, just to let you know. Um, so I got to bring part of my culture to this to this season. So this is a pot and column still distillate rum, and it's aged in and. Um, Oak barrels and it is ready when the master blender said it's ready. It's good, it's dry, and it works well with this this cocktail. And I believe isn't Mongay the oldest functioning rum distillery? In well, I'm going to say this, and I have no apologies for it. Barbados is the place that invented rum. <laughs> all right. I mean, we have rum all around the Caribbean. I know that St. Kitts has some beautiful rum. I actually um. There's a particular rum I don't want to say it because it might be kids watching. It's called Donkey, and I really want to. I really want to try some of their specialty rums. Well, rum in the Caribbean, we've all come from the same background, and we've made we've been making rum all over the place. And depending on the water, climate, and the people, it makes the rum what it is. All right. All right. So now we're going to mix your yeah. This is a delicious very, um, mix here with very simple Mong cocktail. So once I have I have this already pre-made, all I'm going to do is add some ice. You can hear me. Yeah, you can hear me. So it's a built cocktail, so I'm not going to stir or shake or make anything fancy. Two ounces of, because I like a lot of rum in my cocktails, two ounces of the Monge Black Brow. That's two ounces. It's my story. I'm sticking with it. I'm <laughs> and I'm just going to basically top up with some of the fresh mango juice. You can drink this on its own, and it's very refreshing on a hot summer day. You can use it like a rum punch. Um, actually, when you, when you make a green mango juice like this, People, people who don't like mangoes will drink this before they actually drink a sweet mango. So you've got two varieties of mango. So a green mango juice compared to sweet mango juice is completely different. It actually tastes like an entirely different fruit. So what I'm going to do so is, is just... Is it almost like a citrusy flavor there? Um, I don't know if you guys have this fruit. We call them golden apple at home. So it tastes just like golden apple juice. Exactly like golden apple juice. Actually, if you didn't know it was green mango, you could swear it was golden apple. By the way, I can smell the rum from here. You just... Oh, nice. No. So since I got it here, I actually have some slices of the same green mango. What I want to do is just release some of the oils and stuff inside of the mango itself, like tenderize the mango. What I'll do is just... Just add a bit of salt and some black pepper over them. I'm going to just mix them up and just pop them on top of your cocktail. That's it. So once you are eating the, once you're drinking the actual juice itself, you take a bite of that salt and pepper, it actually balances, it works out, it dances in your mouth. It's a very beautiful thing. So basically, that's it. Right. Well, that looks and smells wonderful. If there's anybody here who is from the other side of the pond, from Europe, it's afternoon for you, so you can try this. Yeah, sure. Anyone can come up. Anyone. You can have a try. You tell me what you think about it. Anybody? Somebody? Anybody? Anybody? Who? All right. Oh, come on. One time. Was okay. And from whence do you hail? I've come from London. Perfect. So it's afternoon in your bar. Drink up. Let me just take off Thank this you. so you can you can get it properly. I'll pop them. In, I'll pop them at the side. I'll let you hold one in your hand. So you get the taste, then you get. I'm to taste this. Yeah. So it's like. This is really good. It's um, slightly acid, but it's very. I can taste the salt. I can taste the pepper. It's making me thirsty. It's making you thirsty. You <laughs> taste that now with it. He's good. <laughs> so I'm going to say cheers to everybody who's watching this, and um, I hope I'm still standing. Sip. Sip. That's what you're Very for. good indeed. Thank you very, very much. Very good. I probably need some more rum, I think. Oh, I got plenty of this. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> 
You're welcome. Pleasure. And thank you very much. I like it. You can, you can take your drink Take your drink with you. With you. This is all you. <laughs> Folks, we want to thank you all so very much for taking the time to come and, and meet our chefs. And you, this is just, no it's pun intended, it's the tip of the iceberg. We have so much more. That was a good one, wasn't it, Greg? We have so much more for you in the coming days, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at all of our functions. Thank you very much and to all of our chefs. Thank you. I am going home a much more no- knowledgeable person than before. Um, we got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you also very much again for coming out today. All right. When yours? Yes. No, no, that's fine. Sweet, isn't it?